Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add rig controls to your uh, to your armature. Um, so you can see that I've got a controller where I can control the position of the foot. Um, the foot also stays like completely flat as I move it around. Um, I can also control the lift of the heel of the foot, um, and I can also control the lift of the toe of the foot. Um, on top of that, uh, you can rotate the uh, the foot along the around the z-axis and have the foot sort of stay flat on the ground, um, and uh, be able to con control the uh, the direction of the knee. So yeah, all of all of this stuff is uh, really useful when it comes to creating uh, sort of animations for your character, um, and it's all set up using uh, the bone constraints within Blender. Um, cool. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this video follows on from a previous video, uh, skinning your character in Blender 2.9 with vertex groups. So in the scene here, I've got a character and it is skinned and I've got a basic sort of armature. Um, and yeah, uh, you may be wondering like if we can start animating with this. Short answer is no, I guess. Um, let me show you why. Because if I was trying to animate like a walk cycle, um, I would have to then move this this bone like this, this bone like this, um, and sort of pull the entire character down, and then kind of move um, this leg back in place. And you can see how kind of like tedious this is going to be. It's like, how do I place this this foot on the ground properly? Every time I kind of rotate it, it's like I've got to do this like binary search until like I get the right uh, sort of position for the foot. And that is uh, that's really tedious and kind of slow. So um, the better solution is basically creating like uh, rig controls. Um, it's not really an official term in Blender, uh, but they basically think of them as like the strings on a puppet. They'll basically like push and pull at the underlying skeleton, um, but they won't actually be exported with the character themselves to Unity. Um, they really just sort of help a helper bones uh, to help with animating the character and making animation easier. So there's uh, there's basically three sort of helper things that we're going to create. One is um, uh, being able to move the whole foot around and have the leg sort of use inverse kinematics and target um, a particular position for the foot. Um, then another one is actually being able to lift the heel off the ground um, because in a walk cycle there's kind of two important poses one is when you place your foot on the ground um, out in front of you you've got your heel down first so we need the ability to lift the front of the foot off the ground and the other is uh, basically when you're pushing off you've got your toe on the ground and in this case we need the ability to lift the heel off the ground um, so yeah those three things the position of the foot and the lift of the heel and the lift of the the toe so yeah, um, the first one that we'll start with is uh, just the being able to position the whole kind of leg and or position the foot and have the leg follow it. And we'll use um, IK to do that. So um, we need to add a new uh, uh, bone here to act as the target for the IK constraint. So if you just select the ankle in edit mode and then extrude another bone outwards and you'll notice that it's actually created another bone on the other side. Um, and that's because I have this x-axis mirror option turned on. Um, so yeah, I have a target for the IK constraint and I just need to actually clear the parent and uh, this is just so the bone can move away from the body, um, sorry, away from the leg and that that will basically let the leg follow this, this position, otherwise it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation. Cool, so um, uh, to actually add the constraint you need to be in pose mode so you can hit tab or just select it from the menu above here and um, you can either select the bone um, and then go to this tab here and go add bone constraints and select inverse kinematics from the list here it comes up red which basically means it's not configured correctly um, so you could actually fill out all the fields here like this um, but an easier way I find is select the target for the IK constraint and then shift select the bone that you want to add the IK to and now hit shift I and that will add IK to active bone. Cool. So now we have some IK um, and if I move this bone around you can see that the leg is now following it um, but so is the rest of the body <laughs> um, and that is basically because the, the 
chain length on this bone is set to zero, which means it will just evaluate all the way back up the, the tree um, until it reaches the end. So we just, just want to limit it to um, two uh, to two bones, which is the shin and the thigh bone. So now if I move this, you can see that only these two bones are now sort of uh, trying to align themselves with this. Um, and the last bit for the IK constraint is actually um, being able to change the direction of the knee. That's uh, That can be quite useful sometimes. So um, what we need to do again is create a um, assign a new bone to this pole target field. So to do that, um, sorry, uh, just going to go back to edit mode and then extrude another bone out from the knee like this and clear the parent and now uh, just move it sort of somewhere out in front just uh, so it's always sort of in front of the knee and it never sort of comes behind when we're animating like a walk cycle um, you can put it as far as you like um, just so long as it is kind of in line with the knee um, so just yeah try to lock it to the y-axis and I'm just gonna name this bone like uh, knee ik underscore l and I'll do the same for the other bone so knee ik underscore r and now um, we basically just need to go back into pose mode um, select the constraint uh, first I need to select the armature and under the bone field here I can select knee ik and um, the rotation of the leg has gotten a bit mucked up so we just need to change the pole angle and I think in this case it's minus 90. Cool, so yeah, now I can move this this foot around and I can also move the uh, the direction of the knee like that, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the next step is um, basically being able to lift the heel off the ground and to do that, we kind of need to bend this bone um, around this pivot point to lift the heel off, if that kind of makes sense in this direction. But when I try to rotate this bone, it always rotates around the ankle. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is, um, uh, let me kind of show you. Um, so if we go into edit mode and create a, uh, a new bone coming back from here, and um, if I just clear the parent on this one, now, um, and if I make this a child of this bone, so if I go make parent keep offset, now you can see um, when I rotate this, you can kind of see that that this ankle is sort of following in an arc, and all we need to really do now is actually just pin the toes uh, to the ground, and uh, to do that we'll use whoops, we'll use um, IK constraints again. So if I select the uh, ball joint here and then extrude a bone upwards into the sky and again for the toe uh, make another one here and we basically just want to create an IK constraint where this bone always points towards this location and this bone always points towards this location so go back into pose mode oh actually um, I just need to clear the parent on these bones again so go back into pose mode now and just select the target, shift select the bone you want to add the IK to, shift I to add IK to active bone, oops, <laughs> I think Siri's waking up, um, <laughs> and now do the same for the toe bone, so uh, select the toe bone, now shift select the, um, or the toe target and shift select the toe bone, shift I to add the IK active IK and we in both cases we just want to set the chain length to one so that just means only this bone will try to follow this this joint it won't affect any of the leg and similarly for the toe bone and now if uh, uh, yeah if I rotate this bone here um, with any luck you can see that the toe is now locked um, locked to the ground and we're just lifting the heel up so this is kind of what I mean by like the the rig controls um, they're, they're just additional bones that kind of let you bend the skeleton in kind of more interesting ways. Um, but one thing that we have now lost is uh, the ability to actually lift the whole foot off the ground. It's, uh, it's behaving quite weirdly and uh, we can't really control that one either. 
and that's because these extra bones um, they're, they're just staying in place um, so we actually would need to create a master bone where we parent all of these three bones too and then we can just move move that master um, that master bone so if we go back to edit mode uh, just create another bone sort of anywhere um, because we're going to clear the parent anyway and I want the pivot point for this bone to be around the heel um, and so I'll just grab yeah position the fat end of the joint at the heel of the character and uh, I'll grab this um, the other end of the bone and just sort of move it towards the front of the foot like that and now we can basically parent all of these bones to this bone here by hitting Control p keep offset and with any luck um, going into pose mode now I should be able to move this entire foot yeah cool so now I can move the entire foot round and uh, the whole foot stays completely flat um, and I can also rotate around the heel and then I can if I clear the parent on that I can also rotate this around the, the toe which yeah is totally awesome that's exactly what I was wanting to do um, except yeah I think maybe the position of this could be improved just either so slightly somewhere like that um, yeah cool if I just move that out a little bit more back a little bit some, something like that cool um, so that is pretty much it um, but the only things really left to do um, is if I try to rotate this around the z-axis for example you can see the whole foot starts to bend and behave quite weirdly and there's actually a very simple fix for this um, it's just in the IK constraint for the foot bone we just always want to have that um, point towards the toe basically rather than off in some random direction so if I just select the armature here um, find out the name of this bone which is ball L and uh, just assign that as the um, the pole target for, for that constraint now I can just uh, set the pole angle to minus 90 and cool so now the foot is actually staying flat when we rotate it around the z-axis um, which is great <clears throat> so if I just uh, remove the rotation and everything what kind of mode am I in now this is really weird okay I'm not really sure what's happening <laughs> um, yeah cool so let's just test everything out one, once more yeah so I can now move this around um, I can rotate it around the x-axis um, and I can also rotate this one like that so the um, there's just a few kind of like finishing touches I want to do so I actually don't that's not too handy having the position of this bone here so I'm just going to grab the end whoops grab the end of this bone and just kind of move it up here I just find it it's uh, kind of makes a little bit more sense having it up there and what else is there left to do oh yeah so there's kind of a mess of bones here but the only ones that I'm really interested in as an animator are this uh, this bone here which controls the position of the foot and this bone here which controls the arch of the foot I guess so if I um if I move um, all of these bones here oh actually plus the knee joints uh, the knee sort of directions um, if I move all of these bones to another layer uh, change bone layers and just move them to this layer now I can hit Control I to invert my selection and move all of these bones to a different layer over here now I can kind of um, easily switch in the armatures tab between these different layers and that kind of just lets me focus on the different parts of the, the character that I'm trying to animate um, which yeah in this case would be the legs and one very 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 final thing to do I think is uh, just go to the item tab and we only really want to control the X rotation of this joint so um, if we just set this to XYZ Euler we can basically lock everything here except this X rotation um, and same for this case here uh, lock all of this stuff and unlock the X rotation and now when I um, 
when I basically grab this thing no matter I don't really have to um uh, yeah sorry if it comes up purple it means you have a driver on it and you can just delete the driver um, anyway so yeah now when I rotate this thing I don't have to be in an orthographic mode um, I can just rotate it uh, just you know freely and it will always stay locked to the x-axis which is pretty handy um, and yeah so I think that's really it for for this part of the tutorial so yeah there's um so one more thing is um when we set up all the ik and everything uh, you can see that it wasn't like correctly mirrored across to the other side of the foot so this is actually quite easy to fix um, if you just uh, go into box select mode and then select um, oh, sorry i think i need to be in edit mode yeah go into edit mode select all of the joints and you can go to armature and then just click uh, symmetrize and that basically copies all of the the IK constraints and you can see that the other side is now yellow as well so if I move this foot I can now also move this foot correctly and yeah, just check all the knee and stuff is working as well um, and I guess also check no which bone was it oh I think if I just go to that layer yeah cool Cool, yeah, um, so yeah, this is the, the toe lift that I was talking about, and uh, basically you can clear that by just hitting Alt-R on that bone, and you can also rotate this one to lift the, the heel. And I can also move this entire thing around. Cool, um, yeah, so that is it for this video. Um, really appreciate you watching. If, uh, if you found this interesting, uh, give it a like, and if you wanna stay tuned for the next episodes which will cover the pelvis um, slash torso kind of area uh, the head and uh, probably the arms as well um, then yeah uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon to get notifications when those videos come out cool thanks for watching see you in the next video kakite